Matthew. Lord, Lord Jesus, 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 Jesus. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Son is Oh, not for me. They said to him, no, there's only one thing. Thing in the body. Said to them, How is it then that David by the I only take I take that as three words unless Robin and John. The Lord said to my but Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. And if then David does call you Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give an answer. But I won't try to carry Nor someone. from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. She came out and looked around after tragedy, and she looked around and she said, why do we only act like this now? I only love God as much as I love the person I love the least. 
We are living in a time right now, I said that this week, and I said to myself, I, have, I say that every day. I need to find new words for that. But the reality is we are living in a time right now where I can't think of a time this week I got an email or a phone call from someone that's heart wasn't heavy. Whose heart wasn't heavy. Maybe it was just because of the wars. Maybe it's because when we turn on our machines, those computer machines, which I'm mad at this one this morning. But if you're able to be here on Zoom, I'm not mad. See, God plays with us all the time. For people this week, I heard, and I heard it again this morning, you know, I've heard about these mass shootings, and I feel bad, but it doesn't usually affect me, but this one did. I've heard over and over again this week. Why were we given the commandments? You know, Moses came down the mountain and had the tablets. The original tablets, it's our very funny joke, but I won't bore you with it. Just it was, yes, see, thanks, thank you, you got it. It didn't have a power surge, it was just the original tablets, right? Moses came down with the original tablets, with the original kind of guiding principles, right? How is it that we're supposed to act? How is it that we're supposed to live? What, what are the ways that we can be in the world? that will not only feed and nourish and fill us, because they do, but that they will feed and nourish and fill those in our midst. But sometimes as human beings, we see rules as things to break, or maybe just suggestions. I'm not sure I'm the only one, but I've met enough people in my life to know that I'm not the only one that used to believe that. And so how is it that we imagine that God tells us over and over again through Moses and through Paul and through Jesus and through so many other people in scripture and story and biography, how it is that we can live in the world and love even when it's difficult? How is it that we can love even when we don't know where it is? How is it that we can love when it feels dark? I read in a pretty reputable source, but it feels a little too convenient to be right, that I did know that the words, do not be afraid, are one of the most quoted lines in scripture. As I cross-reference it, somebody's out there counting, say it's 365 times. Again, I'm skeptical of that, but I believe that God would tell us every morning, do not be afraid. But does that mean shootings won't happen? Unfortunately not. Does it mean that hard things won't happen? Unfortunately not. Does that mean we won't lose a job or we won't get a job we hate? Does it mean any of the things that cause us pain? No. But it means you will not be alone. Because as many of you heard me say, it doesn't say you have nothing to be afraid of if you follow me. God just says, do not be afraid. We can do this. We can only do it together. We can only do it if we're connected. We can only do it if we try to walk together in peace and love and justice. In lectionary this week, we have a lawyer that joins us, and she's like, you know, lawyers, there is a difference. You know, there's justice and there's morals, and sometimes it's hard. What is our compass? Because love doesn't have rubrics, right? Love doesn't have little lines that says, okay, if you do this, 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 and this, our commandments are pretty good. But I don't think I want to have killing be my base, you know, that could be my baseline, I guess, but I'd like to strive for better. Now, 
we hear over and over again questions. Questions. And isn't, aren't questions the way we really get to know each other? Aren't questions the way we get to know God? Aren't questions the way we get to come to know and understand who we are and what we are? The Sioux believed that the longest journey we can make in this life is from the head to the heart. I've always given somebody else that credit. As I researched this morning, the longest journey is from the head to the heart. We hear over and over again, love your neighbor as yourself. That's the greatest commandment. And yet, we are weary. I heard this week from someone who was friends with a woman that killed herself this week. I heard this week from someone who knew someone in the bowling alley. Thanks be to God, the person I know, that their loved one is okay. I heard from others that are worried about family, friends, and neighbors that are in Israel and other places that feels unsafe and dangerous. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid because we know that our work is to love our neighbor as ourself. Yesterday I read uh, one of the stories from one of the people that lost someone in the shooting this week. And he said, I can't hate that man because it will not bring my son back. It might take my son. We have work to do in the world, but we know that with God anything is possible. We cannot fix everything. I heard from people that are like feeling so powerless. What do I do? Every time I turn on, this, every time I turn on the TV, something bad is happening. And we can all kind of temper our internet and temper our news, but at the same time, we have to live in the world. Sometimes that's the hardest journey of all, is living with our faith in the world. There are many days when I feel like, and I'm sure you do too, whatever it is that gives you comfort. You know, we have like one of those weighted blankets. I love my weighted blanket. You know, there are times when you just want to go home and turn the phone off and the computer off and get under the weighted blanket. And you can do that for a short period of time. It's okay, and I would even argue necessary for us to find ways to find comfort and know we are safe and okay. But we must get out from under the blanket. And hear the words from God, do not be afraid. And that takes faith sometimes. Kate Bowler is a, an author and theologian, said this week that hope is an anchor pointed, a planted in the future. I love that one. Hope is an anchor planted in the future. We live with faith that with God anything is possible, but we know that right now the world feels hard. Thought it had calmed down this, last night, got in bed, made the mistake of checking my phone. You know? Ugh. And then uh, saw another, the, I don't know, I forget his name right now, the Met guy from France, Matthew. Matthew. Matthew Perry died. Of course he died. You know, it was like, God, I'm sure he lets me pray for his soul, his soul departed. It just seems constant. We had a vigil. The Bishop of Maine tried to have a vigil. We did end up having a vigil. One night this week, for those in Lewiston, we sign in, we get ready. Those of you that, and it, we got, it got hacked awfully. Horrible pornography came up. Horrible. And I've heard of this. We had been blessed. It hadn't happened, so we all signed out. We were gathered, 400 and some odd people trying to pray. I just got mad. I just got mad. Signed back in. 
they got another, you know, about a hundred and some odd people gave up, and God forbid what they saw, and, but then like 300 people tried again because we wanted to pray. Then it happened again. Shut it up. Tried it a third time, which, you know, is very Trinitarian, I suppose. And we managed to pray. By that time, the governor of Maine, whatever you think of her, was having a very hard week and was like, I'm in the kitchen of the Blaine House doing the best I can. But she showed up again, too. And by that time, there were a little over 100 of us that did finally pray together. But all I could think of is, God, all we wanted to do was pray. The world needs us to love right now. We need to love each other. We need to keep trying. We need to be persistent. I was very glad that I stayed with it. Not because it mattered to anything or anybody else, but I was glad to have the chance to pray. I'm glad to be here this morning. I'm glad to have the opportunity to talk to any of the people that have contacted me this week feeling heavy of heart because we have a lot to be grateful for. And it does not serve us to feel guilty. It does not serve us to feel bad or to keep that light under a bushel, as you've heard me say so many times. We must be the light of Christ in the world. We must be the light of God in the world, whatever that means. Maybe you know someone in your life that never goes to church, but you just feel like when they're around, it feels light. That's God's light in the world, in my opinion. Dorothy Day, another quote from her this morning, which has given me some solace this week. What do we do? We can throw a pebble in the pond and be confident that its ever-widening circle will reach around the world. We repeat, there is nothing we can do but love. And dear God, please enlarge our hearts to love each other to love our neighbor, to love our enemies as our friend. Mr. Card had family and friends that are broken and devastated because he's passed, as are the other 18 families. We must continue to pray to find ways to take care of ourselves, to love ourselves as God loves us, to find ways to reach out to those in our homes or in our communities, in our churches, in our lives, to be that light. And I do believe, I do not know how it works, only God does, but I love the image of the circles going out and out and out, because we do impact each other. I bet each one of you can think how you feel when someone sent you a card, or maybe someone called when you least expected it, or maybe you walked in to do something around here and you were having a crappy day, and somebody just gave you a hug and didn't even say much. How is it that we can find our way outside of what feels like darkness? Find our way because we are each other's light in that tunnel. We are. And you can all imagine a time when you know that. God, please, Please enlarge our hearts to love each other, to love our neighbor, 
and to love our enemy as our friend. Amen.